and welcome to another of Mrs Patnor's Maths lessons here today. Uh, we're on lesson three of the topic of um, capacity and measurement. So we are looking at capacity again today, but we are going to start by giving you a number of the day. So on your number of the day sheets here, then I am going to get you to look at bonds to ten again. So your number of the day for all of you is ten so that you can look at those bonds that we did before. Um, so try and see if you can remember the rhyme. Okay, so zero and ten are big strong men. One and nine get along just fine. Two and eight are always late. Three and seven don't make eleven. Four and six are in the mix. Five and five like to jump and jive. Okay, so that will help you out with your number of the day this week, our bonds to ten. A friend of mine also changed the bottom bit here, where it's an adding sentence, and turned it into a subtraction, a takeaway sentence, by changing the symbol here on box two. So maybe you could do that as well and have a go at doing a subtraction sentence for your number of the day rather than an adding one. Okay, so we're going to count in fives first of all today uh, to 115. Okay, so we're going to use the whole of the 100 square and then just come back and look at revisiting, say, 105 and 110. So how we can still do it even if we've only got a 100 square. Are you ready? Let's do it to our call tune. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115. Excellent counting in fives. Uh, before we go on to capacity, one other thing I want us to revisit, and that's looking at odd and even numbers. We had a lesson on this a few weeks back now, probably before even the Easter holidays, and we spoke about odd and even numbers, particularly when we were halving. And we realised that we could only perfectly halve odd, no uh, sorry, even numbers because they would have exactly a partner each time to, to halve, to give one to one side and one to the other. Okay, I have my Numicon here to remind us what that might look like. So for instance, if I showed you, the number four piece of Numicon, you can see that these two have a partner and these two have partners. There's not a knobble on the top by itself. So remember that's an even number because if I were sharing these holes out, I could say this one over here, this one over here, this one over here, and this one over here. So I could halve four and have two equally on both halves, okay, on both sides. So four is an even number. What about if I showed you this one? What number is this? Count those holes. This is six. Is this an odd or an even number? Could I halve this exactly, have equal amounts on both sides? Odd or even? It's an even number. They've all got their partners here. And there's no one knobble on the top, so six can be halved perfectly. That is an even number. What about if I showed you five? A good old red piece of Numicon five. Five holes. Oh, they've got partners. They've got partners. But he's all by himself, a little knobble on the top. So is he odd or even? Could I halve him equally? He's odd. I couldn't halve him. That one would go on this side. That one over there. That one over there. That one over there. But then I've just got one that could go on this side. And I wouldn't have another one to put over this side. So it's an odd number. I couldn't halve five perfectly. Let's have a look at... Hmm, let's look at three. Here's my three. Is that odd or even? Three is an odd one. It's got a little knobble on the top by itself that doesn't have a partner. So three is an odd number. Now remember what I mentioned to you, I think it was yesterday as well, that even if you've got huge numbers, now let's do a couple on my board here, I've come without my rubber, even if you've got huge numbers, so imagine that I had wrote, I'm going to use my sleeve, that I had written on my board, let's go to 115 because that's the number we just counted to in five, so I've got 115 on my board. Now if someone said to me, is that an odd 
or an even number, I might think, oh, go away, I have no idea, it's a huge number. I'm not going to sit and share them out and see if I can share them exactly half on each side equally. But I don't need to. I just look at this last number here in what I would call the ones column. Okay, this is the tens column and this is the one hundreds column or the hundreds column, sorry. So in the ones column, I see a five. Now, as long as I know that a five looks like this, if it's one nobble on the top there, it's going to be an odd number and I won't be able to halve it equally. I won't be able to halve it uh, exactly. So I'd be able to know even with big numbers that I cannot halve them and that they are odd numbers. Okay, just by looking in that one's column. Right, anyhow, let's get back to business. So that's our odds and evens. Let's put those over there. Now, capacity. So this week's lesson, and if you're in my class, I gave a little heads up for this, but if not, then I will tell you now what we're going to do. I'm going to make a, a cone shape out of a piece of paper. Now, if you've got a bit of card, that's probably even better, um, but it doesn't have to be black or anything like that. That's not important, just that we're going to make a cone with this together. Now, I've got a nice square shape here. So in order to make my cone, I'm going to roll it like I'm making a cone if I want to take um, a portion of chips away. So I say I'm taking it away and they might give me it in a little cone so I can help myself to my chips out of the top. So that is what I am making here. Now I can, I'm going to make sure it has a point at the bottom because I don't want to be losing any of my rice that we're using today to measure and equally a cone should have a point at the top or bottom depending what way you're holding it up. And I'm going to need some uh, sticky tape now. So I've got my masking tape. Sometimes it helps to have a few bits lined up along your table first because if you're busy holding your cone it makes it jolly tricky to do your sellotape at the same time. But let's see if I can pop this on. So I've got my cone shape. Looks a bit like a party hat, okay? It's not straight at the bottom, it's a little bit pointy. But I definitely want that point at the top because it is a cone and cones have a point at the top or bottom depending which way you're holding them up. So I've got my tape on. When I get my first bit in place, I can relax a bit then. I can consider if I need to put some other bits on to make it stronger. I might go for a little bit nearer the point just to keep that point nice and tight. So I'm gonna wrap that around like a bandage to get my point on there. Okay, now, I don't want my cone to have this funny end on because if we're looking at our 3D solid shapes, we don't have this funny bottom to our cones. We have a nice flat, circular shaped face on a cone, don't we? So I'm going to squash it a little bit flat for now. And then I'm going to cut it, if I come a little closer, I'm gonna cut it about here, I think. I'm going to cut it straight across like that. I might need some more sellotape in a minute. I'll have a look. And just trim it up so it's kind of straight all the way around. So there's no bits that seem to be poking up higher than other bits. Okay. And then I have my cone. Now I haven't got my circular face on there because I've cut it off and I want to keep it what they call hollow so I can put my hand in it because I'm going to be using it to measure for capacity in a moment. But it does look like a cone, okay, so the eye, if you put it out that way, it's just missing its flat circular face at the bottom because I want to use it for capacity. I'm going to put a little bit of extra tape just on the top because I don't want it to fall apart on me. And then you should equally have a cone now, whether you're going to do it after the video or now, there's your instructions to make your cone. So I'm going to look at the size of my cone as well. This is what's important today. So I am going to be using, instead of my trusty teacup that I've been using for the last couple of days with the water, because unfortunately it got broken. Yes, my daughter had the hiccup, she went to pick it up and she dropped it and it smashed into pieces and it was one of my favourites, so never mind. I am going to use a little Tupperware box today. So I'm going to call it a Tupperware box rather than a cup today. So this is what we're measuring and this is our non-standard measurement that we're using today. We're not talking about millilitres and litres like you see on the backs of labels in real life uh, situations in the shop. This is going to be my non-standard uh, Tupperware box. Okay, this is what I'm measuring with today. And I will use this for both of the things I'm measuring, otherwise it won't be a fair test. So I must always use this on both items. Let's have a little tidy up. So what I've got here today is my box of rice, because I'm not using water today. I don't know if you saw yesterday's video, but I had a little bit of trouble with the water. So I'm going to go with rice today. It's nice and easier to see as well. It's a bit more visual on the camera. And I have my jug here. Okay, so the two things I am comparing today, looking at and deciding which one is bigger, is my jug 
and my cone I've just made, okay? Now I wanna have a good look at these, have a good look at the camera, have a look at how, remember how wide they are, so if I show you how wide my cone is and I'll show you how wide the jug is, not too dissimilar. Think about how tall they are. Okay, let me bring it down in the camera. How tall is the jug compared to how tall is the cone? Now the cone is quite a bit taller, but the jug, you may notice is wide in fact it's slightly wider at the bottom than the top but it's kind of wide all the way up whereas my cone obviously starts with a point and then slowly gets wider to the top okay so it's very skinny and pointed at the bottom so it's going to hold a little less in that bottom part all right so i want you to guess first of all or predict should i say predict which one of these is going to hold the most rice going to hold the most tupperware boxes of rice is it my cone or is it my spotty jug so you call out to the screen which one you predict is going to hold the most rice which one is going to hold them is going to have the bigger capacity which one is the biggest um, item okay so uh, you can also, if you want to, before we start measuring, predict, uh, estimate rather, get all my language mixed up today, estimate how many Tupperware pots you actually think are going to go into this cone, okay? Now, I might estimate that I think, mm, I think four Tupperware pots of rice is going to fill this cone. Now, I predicted that probably my cone is going to hold more than my jug so I think my cone has a bigger capacity than my jug okay I might be wrong but that's what I'm predicting so I think my cone is bigger holds a bigger capacity than my jug so if I think that my cone is going to hold four Tupperware pots of rice and I think this is the biggest one then when I come to estimate how many pots of rice will go into my jug will my number be bigger than four or less than four if I think the jug is smaller, has less capacity, will my number be bigger than four that I think will fit in here or less than four? It should be less than four because I think this is smaller, will hold less. So it should be a smaller number of pots of rice. Okay, so when you're doing your predicting and deciding which one you think is bigger out of these, make sure that when you come to estimate, before I tip the rice in, that you are reflecting your prediction with that. So if you think this one's bigger, then you're going to estimate more pots of rice are going to go in here than in here. So parents, listen out for that with your children. That's a very important thing. Right, so Tupperware pots. Remember, I can't just put that much rice into my pot because you can see it's not full to the top. And I can't count that as one Tupperware pot because it's not. In fact, while we're here, before I carry on with this, let me ask you, if I show you this much, how would you describe... How would you describe my pot of rice there? Would you say it is full? Would you say it is almost empty? Or would you say it's half full? Remember, half full and half empty are the same, so you could say either, really. How would you describe my pot of rice? Call it out to the screen. I think I'd probably describe that pot of rice as half full, my half full pot of rice, okay? Now, if I was to put it like this, hands in there, if I was to do this, and you can see the rice is to the top, how would you describe my pot of rice? I would describe that as a full pot of rice. That's full. Okay, so parents, you can ask your children about the descriptions of how much rice is in their pots as well, and record that language on tapestry if you're in my class, or pat yourself on the back if you get it right if you're not in my class. So this is what I want all the pots to look like, full pots, in order to count it as a whole pot. And I am going to pour them into my cone. So in goes one. Remember, don't spill them because if half of it falls out, it's not a whole cup for, is it? I've only got one pair of hands here, which is tricky. So two cupfuls. Now I estimated four. Let me show you already what it looks like inside. Look at that. Do you think I'm going to get four in there? There's two in there already. I'm thinking no. Let's see. Are you on pot number three? Here's pot number three. Let's tip it in. Be careful, and I've got to move it around a bit to try and fit it in without pouring it over the side. Now, if I level that off like this, 
I would say that's fair to say that that cone holds three pots of rice okay so three pots of rice for my cone so my estimate wasn't bad I estimated at four so I was pretty close there actually so three pots of rice for my cone I am going to pop that in there for now but I'm going to write three on my post-it note to record it so I don't forget my non-standard measurement of rice pots this cone has three now remember I thought that this cone was going to hold more than the jug. Let's find out if I was right. So, if so, this is going to have to hold a smaller number than three if it's smaller. If it has less capacity. Let's have a look. Let's fill up my rice pot, a full pot. I'm going to pour it in. It's a little hard in my jug because the top is skinnier, but I'm going to be very careful. I've probably lost two grains, which isn't great, but it can't quite be helped. And then I've got another full pot of rice. So I've got one in there already. Here goes number two. Ooh, this is interesting. Let me give you a quick glance. That is with two pots of rice in. Look at that. It looks a bit similar to the cone, doesn't it? Right, let's put in another pot, a full pot of rice. Is it going to go in? I'm going to move it about a bit so it's not all just going in the middle. Oh, look at that. There we go. Let me show you this. Look at that. My rice is to the top. Three pots of rice went into my jug as well. Let's write that on so we don't forget. Three pots of rice in there. Stick that on. Let's bring it over to the camera. So, three pots of rice filled my jug three pots of rice filled my cone. Which one has the biggest capacity? None of them had the biggest capacity because they had the same, they had equal amounts. So they are the same size. My jug and my cone, although very different shapes as you can see with my pointed cone, although very different shapes and very tricky to try and guess which one would have the most, they have exactly the same capacity. How interesting is that? So not one of them has the biggest capacity, they have equal capacity, they are the equal size. Now, I can probably tell this by when, yesterday when I used the water, I tipped the bigger jug into the smaller jug and that's what caused me most of my troubles yesterday. And what happened when I poured the bigger amounts of water, the bigger bottle into the smaller bottle? Do you remember what happened to the water? It overflowed, didn't it? It's a nice word to use, overflowed, poured out because I didn't have enough space, enough capacity in my smaller bottle to hold all the water from the bigger bottle. So let's see what happens when I pour the jug of rice into my cone. Move it about so it's not all in the middle. Oh. And then let's level it out to the edges. So there we go. Look, they're exactly the same. So every bit of rice in the jug fits into my cone exactly because they are the same capacity. Well, there you go. How interesting. So let's pop my rice back there. This makes me wish I had an ice cream, to be honest, this cone. Pop that in there. So that is our capacity today. Um, I would like you to have a go at home, make your own cone if you haven't done already. Find a jug or something, another container from the, uh, from the kitchen and um, predict first of all which one you think is going to be biggest. It probably won't turn out the same as mine, they may not be the same capacity, they may not be the same size. So predict which one you think is going to hold more, then estimate how many pots of rice are going to fit in each one. Remember the one you thought was bigger would have a bigger estimate, a bigger number because you think more rice pots will fit in it. So remember that when you are estimating. Um, and I think that we will meet again tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to move on to measuring. We're going to look at measuring distance. So we're going to be talking about non-standard units of measurement. So we're not necessarily going into centimetres so much, although it would be kind of handy to have a tape measure because we might just mark some numbers on the floor as well and we might just talk about metres and metre sticks. So I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.